Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear church, it is another beautiful Sunday morning, and it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord today. Today, this morning, I want to address a question, a question that you may have asked at some point in your life. That question is, what did I do wrong to deserve this? A lot of times we have times in our lives that things may hurt us, things come into our lives that may confuse us and even cause us to stumble. We wrestle with questions to God of why is God allowing sickness and hurt to come into my life? Doesn't he want the best for me? Today I wanna touch up on this topic and look at the word for guidance and clarity. I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles with me to John chapter nine, verses one through seven. John chapter nine, verses one through seven. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with his saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Now I wanna bring you a different, I guess, uh, story into this. I think most parents here, and I'm not a parent, but I know this from experience because I went through this, is I know every parent knows that their children go through this phase called the why stage. Or with our Slavic kids, zachim, pachimu, acho, this why stage. Why, they ask why. No matter what it is, you say something and they will ask, oh, why, why, why does that happen? Can you explain why? And no matter what it is, they'll question anything and everything. You could say it's raining outside, just like we have, and the child would ask, why? And then giving an answer to the child, maybe something to give them clarity, just say, well, God is providing water for all the plants and the trees so that they can grow. That would be a good answer, right? And they would ask, but why? Why, does, why, does, why do the trees and plants need water? And then you would go on in a never-ending cycle, it seems, of why this, why that? And the, and the child would ask why. And my parents said that I went through this phase too. And I can only imagine how much patience your parents need for your children that ask these questions. And so, Jesus and his disciples passed by a man that was blind from birth. The disciples naturally ask their rabbi questions. I don't know about you, but if I walked with Jesus, I would ask him never-ending questions myself. I'd be asking him a lot of questions that have been on my mind, things that have been on my heart, or even just simple questions of how he created the universe just to understand how he works. See, a lot of people, they listen to podcasts or sermons on long uh, rides or even just a ride from work or back through traffic. You listen to a podcast or a sermon. And so the disciples in Jesus, they had to travel by feet. So with this long route, they had the longest and the most, I guess, beneficial podcast alive. Listening to the words of Jesus is better than any podcast you could listen to today. And so the question that the disciples asked was, why was this man born blind? They naturally thought it was caused by the sin of his parents or himself. Now asking the best question to dig, dig deeper into why the disciples asked this question is, why? Why did they think that it was caused by the, by the man's sin or the parent's sin? You see, the disciples in this time, they learned the law of Moses. They were raised to learn the law of Moses and they were reciting the Torah. This meant that they knew their whole entire life that the sin, sin in our lives, the sin of Adam and Eve caused the fall of man. And it brought sickness, it brought death, our bodies to be broken and ultimately our separation from God. It was only natural that they thought that it was because of sin that this man was born blind. In this case, when they asked Jesus why, Jesus said it was not because of his sin or his parents' sin. This man was born blind so that the works of God may be displayed in him. 
So Jesus spit into the dirt and made mud. Now let's just stop right there. I honestly don't know how much spit it takes to make mud, but put yourself in this man's perspective. You're blind and you hear a strange noise. I won't imitate that noise. You hear someone spit into the mud, spit into the dirt and start making mud. This man starts touching you and putting this mud on your eyes. You see this man, he had mud in his eyes and Jesus said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. This man probably thought, well, I don't really have a choice now because I have mud on my eyes. I have to wash it anyways. So Jesus rubbed mud onto his eyes. The man went washed. He did just as Jesus asked and he was given sight. And we can see another side of Jesus' character of being the creator of the universe, using the dirt from the ground to create and give this man new eyes to see. We read the miracles of Jesus and it seems like they've been watered down because we've read them all of our lives. I remember in Sunday school when I was little, I'd be listening to all these miracles or even just stories from the Old Testament, from New Testament, when Jesus did his miracles and you would sit there in awe and just shock of what Jesus did and these miracles, how amazing they were. Has anyone here ever seen a blind man being given sight? I'd be shocked if anyone said yes. And no, getting a new pair of glasses from your local clinic is not receiving sight, but it's just realizing how much details you've not seen, and it's not even close to this extent. And I, I even remember this past week, see, my, my dad, we, we had my brother's wedding, and it seems like my parents, um, they're getting to that stage of maybe soon they'll become grandparents, hopefully, God willing. And... Um, he came into, he was working in the garage and he, he, he came inside and he was saying, Lena, you have shock, you have nothing about you. He was like, give me your glasses. And I said, I hate to say it, dad, but you're getting old. We realize that in our lives, how important our eyes are, sight is. And we should thank God for our eyes daily. This man, for the first time in his life, got to see the light of day. He could walk back and see where he was staying on a daily basis. He could see the city, the synagogue, and even the temple. And even later in this chapter, it says that he came to see Jesus, and he saw the man that gave him sight. And he believed that this was the Son of Man, the one sent by God. He is God himself. You see, this blind man was in God's plan for God's glory. Everything that Jesus did was for God's glory. We can see in verse four that Jesus refers to his life on this earth as, a, as the time of day, and that he is the light of the world, that he provides the daylight. But he was including his disciples in his work too. He says, not I must work the works of him who sent me, but he said, we must work the works of him who sent me. He was inclusive of his disciples in his ministry, in his work. And he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But let's see how Jesus includes us in his work. Let's open to Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And it says, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You see, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he also, in his sermon on the mount, says, you are the light of the world, so let your light shine. Jesus was inclusive in his ministry with his disciples, and he is inclusive with you, brothers and sisters. In our time of sickness, just like this man, born blind, he had sickness all his life, God teaches us through our testimonies, through our experiences in these times, he teaches us his power. Through our testimonies, we can show light to this world because we know the power behind testimonies. Because it says, 
They conquered by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. You so partake in being in the light of this world. This passage doesn't contradict the other, but rather completes it. And it ends with very similar words. So that they may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Everything is for God's glory. We have many in this church who have experienced sickness, but through prayer have experienced miraculous healing. There have been many who have said testimonies that in their time of sickness, God showed them where they were at. Maybe they needed to change the direction of where they were going, where they were staying. And they experienced God speaking to them, saying, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. A lot of times, God can put sickness into our lives because maybe there is sin, yes. But there are times that God puts sickness into our lives to show God's power through our testimonies of his power of healing. We've heard many testimonies from you, brothers and sisters. God speaks through people, through those hard times. And coming out of physical healing, we also get spiritual healing. All glory and praise be to God alone for our, all the miraculous testimonies that we have heard in this church. And dear church, this morning, I'd like to call us to prayer. Let us be thankful to God who allows sickness to come into our lives. These times that make us pivot or turn our point of view, make us realize maybe things that we're doing wrong, or even simply to show God's miraculous power and glory through healing. Dear friend, if you are experiencing sickness in your life, thank God for the time that you did have good health. It's not until we get sick that we realize that we were doing so well. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. Thank him and say, I thank God that I am in his plan for his glory. Let us partake in his work of being light in this world and even sharing our testimonies. Let us come to his throne of grace and thank him and give ourselves up to his plan so that his name could be ultimately glorified. Amen. Let us pray.